Welcome back, this is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. I've made many videos on vitamin D. Today I'm gonna to make one about the clinical signs of vitamin D deficiency. And the reason I'm making this video is because I get requests about how much vitamin D should they take if they don't have access to testing. So in some countries it's very expensive, and in some places in the United States, your doctor won't prescribe uh, the testing. So let's go into the clinical signs and symptoms and the exact dosages that I would recommend to be on the safe side while maintaining a healthy level of vitamin D. So let's get right into it. Now, to start with, I am a proponent of testing, especially if you're taking high doses of vitamin D, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 units. You wanna be able to monitor that if you're taking it for months on end. The test is 25-hydroxyvitamin D, which is the inactive form. Ideally, we want it between 60 and 80 nanograms per milliliter. You can also check for 125-hydroxyvitamin D, which is the active form of vitamin D. And I made a separate video on that about how if your vitamin D levels don't go up while taking high doses of vitamin D, you can suspect there's a polymorphism there or malabsorption issues where your uh, active form is very, very high and your inactive form doesn't go up. Now, what are the clinical signs and symptoms? Frequent illnesses. Get sick all the time, right? I catch everything the kids bring home. This is a sign because vitamin D is an important immune modulator. It's very important for Th3 systems. Vitamin D also creates fatigue lower back pain, general sadness or low mood. This is impacting mental health, right? The winter blues, let's say. If you're not getting enough sun exposure, it actually impacts how you feel. Because why? Vitamin D is a hormone. So hormones are necessary, right? Bone loss, hair loss, muscle pain, impaired healing. If you cut your skin, it doesn't heal very well. It just takes a long time. Now that could be diabetes, but it could also be vitamin D deficiency. Skin issues. This is all related to collagen, right? Collagen formation. So if you have all of this, or if you have maybe five or six of these signs and symptoms, you likely have vitamin D deficiency without even testing. Now, what are safe, effective doses for patients who can't test or don't have access to testing? Let's get right into that. Safe dosing of vitamin D. You're gonna dose with vitamin D3, 5,000 international units or 125 micrograms. You want to buffer that with vitamin K, 1,000 micrograms. It's, it's called MK4, MK7. Okay, you can take them together. Many companies actually make them in combination. You also want to use magnesium, 200 to 400 milligrams. The reason you use magnesium is because magnesium is necessary to convert inactive vitamin D to active vitamin D when needed. So there are three forms that I personally like, magnesium citrate, glycinate, and theonate. Citrate is great for people who have bowel issues constipation. So they don't have regular bowel movements or they go every other day, every third day. You definitely want to use magnesium citrate for those patients. Magnesium glycinate is great for overall health and absorption. So you can use magnesium glycinate. If you have sleep issues or sleep disturbances or you have brain fog or cognitive function, I like to use magnesium L-theonate. Okay. Because these are fat soluble vitamins and you should take them with a meal or a fatty meal, you can also use other fat soluble vitamins like vitamin E and vitamin A. So the fat soluble vitamin family is called DECA, D-E-K-N-A, DECA, D-E-K-N-A, okay? So you can use other fat soluble vitamins to help improve uh, function. Now, gallbladder issues. If you have gallbladder issues, meaning you have hypothyroid or Hashimoto's thyroiditis, 
and you have slow contraction or a sludgy type of bile uh, function, um, you want to use some support. Oftentimes people come in, they have Hashimoto's thyroiditis and they have a sluggish gallbladder and oftentimes they get it removed, right? And they have your know, gallbladder removed, but there's no support. So if you're taking fat soluble vitamins or, or fatty foods, you definitely want to support your system. Ox bile, 100 to 200 milligrams with meals. Okay. Also, if you want to improve uh, vitamin D naturally, obviously you can do sunshine, 15 to 20 minutes of unprotected sun exposure. So without any sunscreen, 15 to 20 minutes a day. Now that's sometimes difficult to do, especially in the Northeast, because it's cold outside. So oftentimes people in the Northeast will run low on their vitamin D, regardless of how much sun exposure they actually have, also because of latitude. So ideally you want to get the 15 to 20 minutes of sunshine because it has other impacts other than vitamin D. And then this is a very safe way of taking vitamin D without worrying about high levels of vitamin D or having impact on uh, calcium levels and so forth. So ideally you want to check your vitamin D levels. If you want to do high doses of vitamin D, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 units, definitely get your blood levels checked before doing that. Or as you go through the process, check monthly to your, so you're not exceeding the upper limits. All right. My name is Dr. Jin Sung. We're a clinical excellence meets excellent results. And we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.